You have said, talked a lot about security guarantees, and now we've seen your proposals. You also say you have no intention of invading Ukraine. So will you guarantee unconditionally that you will not invade Ukraine or any other sovereign country, or does that depend on how negotiations go? And another question, what is it do you think that the West does not understand about Russia or about your intentions? Thank you. Speaking of the security guarantees and what it will depend upon, or if something will depend upon the negotiations, our actions will not depend on the negotiation. They will depend on the unconditional compliance with the Russian security demands today and in the historical context. In this sense, we have made it clear that any further NATO movement to the east is unacceptable. There is nothing unclear about this. We are not deploying our missiles over at the borders of the U.S. No. On the other hand, the U.S. is deploying its missiles close to our home, on there on the porch of our house. So are we demanding something excessive? We're simply asking them not to deploy their attack systems over at our home. What is so unusual or peculiar about that? So what would the Americans think if we, for example, decided to come to the border between, say, Canada and the United States or Mexico and simply deploy our missiles over there. Well, does, had, did Mexico and the U.S. never have any territorial disputes? What about California? What about Texas? Did you forget about that? But everything seems to have come down. Nobody remembers those things just like the way they remember about Crimea. We try not to remember uh, the situation in Ukraine. Who created that? Who started the crisis? Uh, was it Lenin? Yes, when, it, when he declared the Soviet Union in 1922 and then the Constitution of 1924 following his death was following the principles of Lenin. This is a matter of security, not just history. This is about security. It is not the negotiations that matter. It is the outcome, the result. I've reiterated this many times, and you're well aware that we said not an inch to the east. That was the NATO guarantee in 1990. So what became of that? They fooled us. We've seen five waves of NATO expansion. Now they're in Romania and in Poland, and they're deploying the relevant attack systems over there. That's what we're talking about. You should finally understand, we're not threatening anyone. We did not come to the US borders or to the UK borders, no. They, they came to our borders, and now they're saying that Ukraine will also join NATO, and they will deploy their systems there. Or not just NATO, they will simply deploy it on a bilateral basis. They will deploy their military bases and their attack systems. That's what we're talking about. And you keep demanding some guarantees from us. You must give us the guarantees. It is up to you, and you must do this immediately, right now, instead of keep talking about this for decades. And uh, use this uh, small talk and uh, soft talk about the need for guarantees of security for everyone. This is exactly what we mean. We are not threatening anybody. And now to the second part of your question. Could you repeat that, please? What is it that you think that the West does not understand ah, about okay. Russia or about your intentions? No, Ah, yes, exactly. Well, you know. What, we understand, what you understand or what you don't understand, sometimes it seems to me that we live in two different worlds. I was speaking about very obvious things. How can you not understand that? You say you will not expand and then you keep expanding. You say we will have equal guarantees for everyone on the number of international agreements. And then we see there is no equality or no equal security. See, here's the thing. Back in 1918, one of the assistants of Woodrow Wilson, the U.S. president, said that the whole world would feel calmer and safer if today's enormous Russia would be replaced with the states of Siberia and four more states 
in the European part of Russia. That was set in 1918, and in 1991 we separated into 12 separate parts. It seems to me that our partners were not satisfied with that. They think that Russia is a tad too large. Even the European countries have turned themselves into a union of states. They are quite small states with populations of 60 to 80 million people, but even after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, we only had 146 million people, and that is too much for the West. I think that is the only explanation for their constant pressure against us. Back in the 1990s, the Soviet Union did everything it could to build normal relations with the West, with the United States. I will keep saying this, and I will repeat for your viewers and listeners out there from, from the media that you represent. I didn't quite get that, but that doesn't matter. Our nuclear sites, our military nuclear sites had experts from the U.S. intelligence authorities. They were going there. That was their job to visit the Russian military nuclear sites. They spent their whole days over there. And the Russian government had advisors from the CIA working inside of it. What else did you need? Why did you have to support the terrorists in Northern Caucasus and use the terrorist organizations for, to reach your goals and break down the Russian Federation? This was exactly what you were doing. And as a former director of the FSB, I know that. We were working with the double agents, and they were reporting to us on the tasks of the Western intelligence agencies. Why did you have to do that? You should have done something different, perhaps treat Russia as a possible ally and strengthen trust. But no, instead you tried to keep breaking us up, and then you started the NATO expansion to the east. We were saying, don't do that. You had promised you wouldn't. And they say, where is it put in written form? nowhere. Well, then laugh off and we uh, don't care about your concerns. And every time we kept uh, responding and trying to make obstacles, we were expressing our concerns about that. But they say no. So you can do whatever you want about your concerns. We will do whatever we need. One, two, three, four, five. We witnessed five waves of NATO expansion. Why can't they understand? What is unclear? I believe everything is clear. We are thinking about our own security.